Hello everyone and welcome to the developer series by Eagle 3D Streaming where we go over Unreal Engine projects to help provide some information on best tools, tips, practices for your pixel stream projects. Today I have with me Morteza who is an Unreal Engine developer at Eagle 3D Streaming. Morteza, how are you today? Good day to you, Quentin, and good day to all of the viewers. Uh, my name is Morteza, and I'm working as an Unreal Engine developer with Eagle 3D Streaming. And today we're going over some tips for using car configurator and maybe other configurators in Unreal Engine and Pixel Stream. Absolutely. So the game plan is Morteza will first hop into editor and go over some optimization strategies uh, specific or that can be helpful for car configurator projects and then I will go over how you can prevent your image from pixelating when streaming using Eagle 3D Streaming. Morteza, all yours. The best things that can just bring out that oomph in your product is the lighting in your scene. So the first tip that I have when you're using uh, Unreal Engine for demonstrating or presenting your product is using Lumen. Lumen is this new technology that, uh, that Epic developed. It can make the workflow much easier and the lighting is just looks much more natural than the old way of baked lighting. So it is simple as that. There is nothing to think about it and it doesn't need that much of a technical knowledge to use Lumen. Just enable it. The engine will take care of everything. So. When you're working with lights, you will need something to see how your lights are affecting the wood. So what we have here is a chrome ball. The way to create a chrome ball is very simple. You'll just put a sphere in the map and you'll find a chrome ball material. This is one of the epics, uh, the Unreal's default materials. Apply a chrome ball uh, material to this. And right here, you can see in this mirror-like sphere, all of the lights. As you can see, I have one light here and there is another directional light that is our sun over there. And also the sky is applying some lighting. I can see how these lights are affecting my world. So for example, if I turn off my directional light, you'll see it just goes away from here as well. It can be specifically useful when we're working with the skylights. So if I turn off my skylight in my uh, outliner here, you can see in my chrome ball, the sky is not affecting the world anymore. Simple as that. So one more thing that we have to talk about is ray tracing. This is the big talk ev everywhere in the gaming industry and of course in Unreal Engine and in product demonstration and presentation as well. So here we have a rectangular uh, light, a rect light, just to be short. So just to show the difference between ray traced shadows and normal shadows, I'll turn off that, that directional light. So the only light we have here is this red light. As you can see in these shadows over here, let me just select this. Okay. As you can see in these shadows, they look kind of too sharp. It's almost black in this area. Then it comes gray and then there is no shadows here. All you have to do is to go, to, go into settings of your light and just enable ray tracing. It is simple as that. As soon as you do that, you'll see this gradient of black to white or white to black as you want it. And the shadows will look much more natural and much more better. But of course, take, in, take that in mind that using ray tracing, of course, needs higher spec graphic cards. So it is something that you should be careful about. So let's get to get rid of this lighting, this rectangular light here, and re-enable our directional light so we can see the scene. When we're working with the scene, something else that you should you should always be careful about, you should always pay attention to, is optimization. And Unreal already gives you all the tools that you need for optimizing optimizing your scene. The most useful tools are first the first is the light complexity, and the second one is the shader complexity and it will go over them. So first of all, we have light complexity. When you turn it on, the screen is not broken. Everything is working perfectly. You have this bar over here that shows from black to white. It shows how bad or how good your lights are. So as you can see, this area is considered good. So when I'm looking at this, this is considered a good lighting because it's blue. This is getting into the bad area. This is a light that is inside the trunk of this car. 
Uh, it's a, it's kind of a bad light in a bad place, but it is not that bad. So just try to keep your scene as simple as possible, so there won't be much pressure on your GPU, and you know, keep that F FPS high. Another thing that we have to take note here is the shader complexity. So as you can see here, we have this a green area of the ground. The wheels are quite green. Most of the parts of the car are red, though, and some parts are white. The green part, again, we have green to white from good to bad. When we're using reflective materials or when we are using, uh, in this case, translucent materials for the glass, this is too heavy on the GPU. So try to use them as few as possible. Do not use too many translucent materials or reflective materials, or even worse, do not use emissive materials because emissive materials can mess with your lighting as well. So that is all I have for the optimization. There is one more thing that is important in the car configuration, and that is the configuration part, actually. So in Unreal Engine, we have this thing called Variant Manager. All you have to do is to create a variant. So we, have, we already have a car variant here. Let's see, this one here. So we have these different variant sets. Each variant set can change a different type of the car. So we have this part for wheels. If I change it, you will notice that wheels will change. There we go. And you can also apply this to the color of the car. So this can be done in the editor or in play mode. As you can see in the, uh, you will see in the next part, in the pixel streaming part, you'll see that this change in materials can be done in runtime too. How you can make it? It is simple as that. It, it is as simple as it can be. You can use the auto capture. Once you enable it, and you create a new variant here. Once you enable it, you can change anything in the scene and it will automatically be captured. So in this case, I'm going to select the hood here. And I'm going to apply a yellow material that I have already prepared. Simple as that. Now we have, this is recorded here. The hood material is going to be yellow when we apply this variant. Note that I'm only applying this to the hood, not the whole, to the whole car. So you'll see that whatever color we're using, it will only change the hood color. So let's play and see how it works. Oh, there is our chrome ball over here. Hmm. So we, when we go into the, the colors, we have the normal variants that are already ex that already exist in this project. And there we go in this part. You'll see that only the hood changes color. It is very simple to create new variants and Epic has made it as simple as possible. That is all I have to talk to talk about today. I'll hand it to Quentin to talk about the pixel streaming part and show you, the, show you guys the ropes. Quentin. Thank you very much, Morteza. That was very helpful and insightful. Okay, folks, so next step, of course, is we've got to get your project into the hands of your customers. So first thing we'll need. Thank you very much, Morteza. That was very helpful and insightful. Okay, folks, so next step, of course, is we've got to get your project into the hands of your customers. So first thing we'll need to do, of course, is to upload your project to Eagle's platform check our documentation on how to do so. And once you generate a streaming URL, then uh, you can begin streaming. So of course, one thing that we always want to be aware of is image quality. And there's one key parameter, the quantization parameter, that's very important when it comes to this. So for those of you who are curious, uh, it's a value that helps manage the quality of the video that's being sent over the internet. If you, set, if you set a low quantization parameter value, then your video is going to be high quality with lots of detail, but the file size is going to be larger. On the other hand, if you want to set a high quantization parameter value, we also just call it QP because it's a lot easier to say, then your video quality is going to be less. So we can actually control the QP value directly from Eagle 3D Streaming's control panel. 
right here in my video demonstration we have a car the same car configurator and image quality is nice and sharp now what I'm going to do is I have uh, a handy tool that will actually throttle bandwidth so what I'm doing right now is I'm actually going to simulate what it'll look like if we then play this application in a low quality environment so you can see I've reduced bandwidth and dun 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 we have the fuzzy image of doom which uh, most customers especially if we're thinking about doing a car configurator where image quality is of the utmost importance uh, this isn't going to be acceptable uh, so the way that we can get around this is using our Eagle 3D streaming control panel and what we need to do is you'll first go into your config and go into the developer options and then you'll want to pass this parameter to your application so pixel streaming encoder max QP and then specify the value now uh, again uh, a higher value means lower image quality so it is inverse which is kind of tricky to remember but basically the lower I set this value the more it forces WebRTC to maintain image quality. Now, of course, we don't get this for free. We do lose frames, but in our experience, we've noticed that clients prefer to maintain image quality over frame rate. So that's how we provide this option. Of course, if you need frame rate in your application, just set a high QP value. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and set this to five. I'll click save and then I'll click broadcast and all this is doing is now it's updating my stream with my new QP value of 5 and then once once the application loads uh, I'll again throttle the bandwidth and give a brief demonstration of us maintaining maintaining image resolution uh, through the QP value so now I'll just go ahead and set that uh, so that frame rate is bottled, bottlenecked, um, and we can see that now the clouds aren't moving as fast. Um, frame rate has dropped significantly, but what has not happened is we didn't get a fuzzy image. And that's because we're forcing WebRTC, which is a technology that Pixel Streaming uses to send your images, to maintain image quality over frame rate. That's our demonstration for today. Morteza provided information about how we can optimize your project and editor. And I showed you how you can prevent a fuzzy image using Eagle 3D Streaming's control panel. These videos are all about providing you the best possible information. So please give us feedback on these videos, what you would like to see, ways that we can do it better because that's all we really care about is just making your pixel streaming projects awesome. Thank you everyone for joining us. Morteza, thank you so much for being with us today. I'm Quentin Anderson with Eagle 3D Streaming. Signing off for today. Yes. <laughs> oh, go for and it. I'm Morteza. And I'm Morteza with Eagle 3D Streaming. Yes. Um, and we will see you on the next developer series. Thanks everyone. Bye. Thank you guys. Goodbye.